Thanks for tuning in to the Cultured Meat and Future Food Podcast. I'm excited to have Carrie Kubel from EnviroFlight on this episode. I want to take a quick moment to mention the Cultured Meat Symposium, which is happening on November 1st in San Francisco. We'll be discussing impact, future, and flavor of cell-based meat technologies. Use the coupon code CMSPODCAST at www.cms18.com to register today. Kerry Kubal is the VP of Sales and Marketing at EnviroFlight, the first U.S.-based company to commercially and sustainably raise black soldier fly larvae as a protein source for animal feed. Prior to joining EnviroFlight, Kerry spent more than a decade consulting with zoos and aquariums to better their nutrition programs for the world's most endangered animals. She believes that sound nutrition for both animals and people is essential for improving quality and value of life worldwide. Carrie is a wife, mother of four, gardener, and animal lover, including dogs, cats, reptiles, and chickens, all of which drive her success in creating a more sustainable protein source for the world's growing and hungry population. Carrie, I'd like to welcome you to the Cultured Meat and Future Food Podcast. Thank you, Alex. I'm very excited to be here. Carrie, tell us a little bit about your background and what your team at EnviroFlight is working on. Certainly. I have a background in livestock and exotic animal nutrition. I attended the University of Illinois for undergraduate and graduate school, where I focused on animal science. I worked at Brookfield Zoo as a zookeeper, and I spent many years working in the field of exotic animal nutrition for one of the largest animal nutrition companies in the United States. Uh, My current focus at EnviroFlight is to produce black soldier fly larvae as a protein and energy source for a variety of animals. Our team will be the very first to commercially raise black soldier flies in the United States, which is really an exciting opportunity. What is the black soldier fly? I can imagine that is what it could be, but exactly what is it? Is it something that we see pretty often? Does it, where does it originally come from? And why is it so important? The black soldier fly is, it's called a mimic insect. They are actually native to most of North America. They tend to hang out more in the warmer climates, the South, but we do find them across the whole country, especially during the summertime. They're called a mimic insect insect because they actually resemble what looks like a black hornet. You've probably seen them out wild, but just assumed it was a hornet. They're very interesting flies. As adults, they do not eat anything. They don't bite and they don't sting. They just kind of flutter around and reproduce and lay eggs and create these little larvae. And that's the part that we use at EnviroFlight to grow the protein source. Interesting. And I'm looking at them now and they definitely look like some sort of bee or wasp. And so that's really Mm -hmm. interesting. So what are some of the products that EnviroFlight has available on the market right now? So like I said, we use the larvae of the black soldier fly to create three insect-based products. And we actually also create one insect frass product. One of the products we make is called EnviroBug, which is basically just a whole dried larvae. It's typically fed as a treat or as an addition to another complete feed. And it goes to a variety of animals. The Enviro Meal and the Enviro Oil are the other two insect-based products that we manufacture. Those are produced when we press the fat out of the larvae that produces the Enviro Oil. And then the Enviro Meal is basically the protein that's left behind from that pressing of the fat. We grind that into a powder and that's marketed as Enviro Meal. Both of these products are used as sustainable insect protein and energy for, again, a variety of species. The fourth product that we produce is called Envirofras, and that product is the sheddings of the insects as they grow, so basically their exoskeleton. It is mixed with waste from the insects as they're eating and digesting food, and then any uneaten food that's left behind at the end of their growing cycle. So the insect frass acts as a wonderful natural fertilizer for flowers, vegetables, even it can be put on your lawn, and is also a potential food ingredient for other animals and even other insects. 
We currently have a pilot plant that we've been manufacturing and selling product from in Ohio, and we have our commercial scale plant scheduled to open later this year, and that's in Kentucky. When we're talking about any type of insects, there's a little bit of an ick factor when it comes to insect-based proteins and foods, even if it's not targeted towards humans. Mm -hmm. Do you think that ick factor still exists? And is the general public feeling better about eating insects or anyone consuming insects? Or has it not changed much? Well, I'm smiling right now, Alex, because I certainly believe that there is an ick factor out there for some people. I mean, let's face it, we're talking about bugs, right? We're adding larvae to foods. Yeah, the ick factor is definitely there. I think we have a long way to go, really, especially in a developed country such as the United States, where we traditionally don't include a lot of insects in our human diets. But the really cool part is that almost every animal out there consumes insects on a fairly regular basis. If you can think about that and look at some of the animals that we're feeding, it kind of takes a little bit of that dick factor away. So, for example, think about the backyard chicken. They literally spend their day seeking out every little bug they can find in the yard or in their chicken coop or wherever they are. Or even a dog out in the grass. They're looking for bugs and they like to chase the bugs down and eventually they usually end up eating them. Or a house cat that chases a bug around the house. It's just in their nature to eat insects. Even grazing animals, when they're out on pasture, will consume insects as they're eating and grazing on the grasses that are out there. And there's a lot of human cultures that regularly consume insects as part of their diet as well. We're really just providing a very nutritious food item that actually supports natural feeding behaviors. We usually put a, a call out for questions from our listeners for any of the upcoming guests that we have. And I mm -hmm. don't think we've ever gotten so many questions submitted. <laughs> and I thought that was really interesting. Maybe it's because of the pet angle. Maybe it's because of the insect angle. I'm not sure. But we have a couple questions from listeners. And one is from Sandy from San Francisco asks that for pets, you recommend Enviro Oil and Enviro Meal. Could you tell us a little bit about the benefits of adding this to a pet's diet? And exactly how can it be incorporated into a pet's diet? Sure. Sandy, thank you for the question. Uh, typically, the Enviro meal and the Enviro oil will be purchased by a pet food manufacturer and added directly into their formulation. As a consumer and pet owner, we would then look for the insect meal to be included in the pet food that we're buying. These ingredients are actually still very new to the marketplace and, in fact, are still undergoing the FDA approval process. But I've already seen a lot of interest from pet food manufacturers, and I'm actually starting to see products come to the market with insect ingredients included. This is a really exciting time to be a part of this industry. Some of the benefits to feeding a product containing Enviromeal would be the fact that it's hypoallergenic. If you have a pet with food allergies, this may be a good option for them to try because it would be a new protein that they would be introduced to, so something they haven't already developed allergies to. The other thing is that it's, for me, very exciting knowing that I'm feeding a sustainable source of protein to my pets. And we can talk a little bit about that as well. But let me jump into the Enviro Oil. The Enviro Oil, as an energy source, provides a high level of lauric acid. Lauric acid is typically found in ingredients such as coconut oil and palm kernel oil. It's not really found in a whole lot of other places or other ingredients. Lauric acid is a medium chain triglyceride, or MCT for short. This is an oil that is easily digested by the body, and it's thought to have several benefits, including antibacterial properties, which again is also very exciting. Lauric acid is believed to cross the blood-brain barrier and allow for a direct source of brain fuel for our pets. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence that MCTs improve mental health in both people and animals alike. You mentioned FDA approvals. Is the FDA a body that also regulates pet foods? Yes, the FDA does regulate ingredients that can go into pet foods, and ingredients cannot be used unless they're approved 
This is for the United States pet food manufacturing. We're going through the process of submitting research trials to prove that the ingredients are safe and beneficial to the animals that we think that they should be included in, in those diets. We spend a lot of time and a lot of money doing these research trials with universities, other companies that third party to run the research trials just to prove that not only is the ingredient palatable to the animal, but it also provides benefit and is safe. Back to kind of what we were talking about with pets, there's a lot of pet owners that are giving their pets human-grade food. Do, would you consider that the products that EnviroFlight is creating could potentially be human-grade? And I know you guys are not going in that direction, but it could be potentially safe for human consumption as well, right? True. There's actually a lot of areas outside of the U.S. that use Lexal Driftfly larvae in human food as well. And I definitely agree that many people do want human-grade food for their dogs and cats. For example, we just talked about the Enviro oil benefits as an MCT and the brain fuel that it can provide. The research is taking place actually both in humans and animals to really fully understand the benefit of this ingredient to those diets. The EnviroFlight products are grown and dried in a top-of-the-line pet food facility. We're meeting the standards. The, uh, there's some newer government requirements that are out there over the recent years with pet food manufacturing. And so our new facility is really top of the line when it comes to meeting those requirements, which is it's very similar actually to a human grade manufacturing facility from a safety food safety standpoint. Back to what we were talking about regarding the black soldier fly, we have one of our listeners from Texas, Luke, asks, what are the advantages to using black soldier flies versus other insects? In this space, I feel like we hear a lot about cricket. Definitely. Luke, this is a great question. And I actually have a couple of answers for this one. I think that, first of all, the growth rate of black soldier fly is very fast compared to any other insects. These little things are just designed to eat and grow, eat and grow. From that standpoint, we're able to produce a lot faster than other insects. The other advantage is the high lauric acid content that we already talked about. And they actually have high calcium too, compared to most other insects. The other thing, I see a variety of dried mealworms and other insects on retail shelves all over the country, actually. But these are all imported insects where regulations are not quite the same as they are here in the States. So in our production here in the U.S., we only feed approved feed ingredients to our larvae. And in other countries, there's a lot of manure being fed to the larvae. And you know how the saying goes, right? You are what you eat. <laughs> so I'll leave you with that thought. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, it, it is the way that we raise the BSFL, the fact that they grow so fast, the higher levels of lauric acid and calcium that they contain, which are really all beneficial to health and nutrition. Not to say that other insects are of poor quality, it's just not quite the same. There was a, another product on the site. It was the bug butter balm. Mm -hmm. Is this also used in a B2B scenario? Yes, actually it is. The bug butter balm is a purified source of lipid that's derived from the Enviro oil, and it's really marketed towards the cosmetic industry. It is very rich in lauric acid, like we talked about with the Enviro oil, which makes it ideal for treating skin conditions and then also for making soap and shampoos. Wow, I didn't even think about the cosmetic industry. Are there a lot of insect-based right. products in the cosmetic industry? Not yet. But again, being that we're the first U.S. facility to commercially raise the black soldier fly, I think you will, over the years, start to see more and more of those products with insect ingredients. Interesting, yeah. And I think that from ick factor we were talking about before, putting it into cosmetics is a lot less icky than eating it, for example. Eating it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 
And by the time you really refine the the bug butter balm, for that matter, you would never even know it's from an insect. I mean, visually or, you know, anything else. Even the Enviro oil, it doesn't have an insect smell or anything really that gross looking or smelling about it. It actually has a roasted nut smell. The dried larvae are the same way. The first thing I hear from a lot of customers that have tried the product or pet food manufacturers that we've provided samples too. One of the very first things they say is this stuff smells good. It smells like I'm in a roasted nut factory. So that's kind of interesting and also helps with that ick factor as well. Wow, I wonder if we'll ever replace olive oils for cooking with insect-based oils. Might be years away from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday though. Maybe someday. What can we expect to see from EnviroFlight in the near future? In the near future, we well, we're opening our commercial plant by the end of this year. And as we work through FDA approval to have product included in pet foods, we will be starting to get that product into the hands of pet food manufacturers, as well as agriculture, livestock, feed manufacturers, backyard poultry diets as well. Um, it's a really exciting time just kind of on that, that we've taken that first step and now we're ready to just open up into the marketplace and the industry for animal feed. One thought that just came up is today, what is currently in the animal feed and what are they currently eating today? Yeah, so there's a lot of conventional, I would say, animal-derived proteins or plant-derived proteins that are being used in animal feed, whether it's coming from swine sources, poultry sources, or legumes, or soy, for that matter. Those are all being used in animal feed right now, fish meals, another source. The EnviroFlight insect protein is a little bit different. It's more sustainably produced on a very small footprint of land compared to those other sources that we just talked about. One of the advantages that we have with insect rearing is that we can vertically farm, which really all that means is that we're stacking trays of growing larvae under one roof. But when you think of like crops growing on a field, it's all two-dimensional, right? The crops are just growing flat on that acre of land or animals grazing they're on, or even in a barn, they're on that flat two-dimensional acre of land. The other interesting thing is that the black soldier flies, like I said before, grow very quickly. It's roughly 40 days from start to finish versus the year or you know nine months that it takes to grow the crops or the animals that are traditional protein producers. On one acre of land, for example, we can produce one to two million pounds of protein in a year. And if you compare that to something like, let's say, soy on one acre of land, we can only produce 350-ish pounds of protein. Or poultry is about 260 pounds of protein per year on that equivalent acre of land. We have that sustainability piece, which as the world population continues to grow and people demand more and more protein because of higher numbers, we need a way as a world to have some other means of producing protein to include in feed. Wow, yeah, and those numbers are pretty impressive in terms of the black soldier fly. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's an astonishing difference when you talk about one to two million pounds of protein per acre versus the next leading source at roughly 300 pound, 350 pounds per acre. Right. And would you say that insect farming is usually vertical or is that something that you guys are pioneering? That's a great question. I've seen both methods. Vertical is not uncommon, but I've also seen methods where they're just maybe big like concrete vats or like sections where the larvae are growing in big boxes. And those are, that's typically outside of the U.S. that I see that type of production. You can get in touch with Carrie on LinkedIn and check out EnviroFlight at enviroflight.net. Carrie, do you have any last insights for our listeners today? 
Yeah, I would say if you share the ick factor, please just keep an open mind about how these tiny little larvae can help feed the world. With a growing population eating more protein than ever before, we really need a way to sustainably feed the world. Enviroflight is really excited to be a part of this solution for this pressing global need. I would be more than happy to answer any additional questions that our listeners may have. And like Alex said, please reach out to me either on LinkedIn or through the Enviroflight website at enviroflight.net. Thanks for listening. Carrie, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your story on the Cultured Meat and Future Food podcast. Thank you for having me, Alex. This is your host, Alex, and we look forward to being with you on our next episode.